Namaskar. In the video series of Refresher Manual on Execution Matter for the staff of district courts at Punjab, Haryana, and UT Chandigarh, today we shall have a look at Chapter 4 of the manual which deals with modes and procedure of execution. This is a very long chapter. So we shall be understanding this chapter in bits and pieces in part by part. So today we shall be looking at modes of execution and procedure of execution. In the procedure for execution, we shall look into the duties of Elmuth or execution clerk on receipt of an application for execution of a decree. Let me take you to these two points on chapter four. Chapter four, modes and procedure of execution. Modes of execution. On the application of the decree holder, decree may be got executed by way of the following modes. By arrest and detention in prison, attachment of salary, by attachment and sale or by sale without attachment of any property, by delivery of any property specifically decreed, by appointing a receiver or in such other manner as the nature of the relief granted may require. The mode of execution depends upon the nature of decree. That is nature of suit which has been decreed. Procedure for execution. Duties of Elmuth or execution clerk on receipt of an application for execution of a decree. Step one. On receipt of execution application by the court, the court shall order the Elmuth or execution clerk to check and report. Step two. Elmuth or execution clerk to report on the following points. Whether such decree is passed by the said court or predecessor of the said court, whether the court has a jurisdiction to execute the decree, whether information in all columns of the execution petition is complete as prescribed, tally column number six of the execution application with register number 10, whether it is the first execution application, if not the first application, what was the fate of the previous execution, whether partly or fully satisfied or unsatisfied? If any payment on the basis of previous execution application has been made or recovered, if yes, how much? Is there any stay order issued by any higher court of appeal? If any appeal filed, what is the fate of that appeal? Check from the application. Whether execution received by assignment or transfer from some other court in same district or transfer of decree from some other district. Whether there is any mention in the application where property of judgment debtor falls or where ju judgment debtor resides. Whether certified copy of a decree and the requisite documents are annexed herewith. We have also provided the proforma of an application of execution application which is as follows. Performa number six, application for execution of decree, order 21, rule 11. In the court of, the name of the court will be given, I dash, the name of the decree holder, hereby apply for execution of the decree herein below set forth. So if we can see, this application has 10 columns. So first column is the number of suit. Second column is number of parties. Third column is date of decree. Fourth column is whether any appeal preferred from decree. Fifth column is payment or adjustment made if any. Sixth column is previous application if any with date and result. Seventh column is amount with interest due upon the decree or other relief granted thereby together with particulars of any cross decree. Eighth column is amount of cost if any awarded. Ninth column is against whom to be executed. And tenth column is mode in which the assistance of the court is required. So all the details are required to be filled by the decree holder at the time of 
applying to the court for the execution of the decree. Therefore, thereafter he shall state in the application that I dash here the here he will have his name put declare that what is stated herein is true to the best of my knowledge and belief. Then he shall sign the application as decree holder and will, will also put the date and the day of and the year. Now where the execution of the decree is sought with the attachment and sale of immovable property, then description and specification of the property is to be given by the decree holder that the undivided that the undivided one third share of the judgment debtor in a house situated in the village of Dash. Here the name of the village is to be given value rupees 40, for example, and bounded as follows. East by G's house, west by H house, south by public road, north by private lane and G's house. So this will give the identification of the property which the judge, which the decree holder desires for the attachment and sale. He will also give this declaration that I dash the name of the decree holder declared that what is stated in the above description is true to the best of my knowledge and belief. And so far as I have been able to ascertain the interest of the defendant in the property therein specified. Thereafter, he shall put his sign as decree holder. Now coming to step three, uh, which is the duty of the helmet or execution clerk that only after after the detailed report, the matter shall be put up before the presiding officer who shall then order registration of execution application and pass an appropriate order. Step four on receipt of file from court by helmet or execution clerk, he shall enter the same in register number 10 and fill column number one to 11 volume six part a four of rules and orders. So how the register number 10 should be maintained by the helmet or execution clerk is also given in the manual. If we can see register number 10 has 23 columns. So column number one is serial number. Column number two is date of application. Column number three is number of suit with names of parties, date of decree stating whether original or appellate and court by which passed. Column number four is name of person applying for execution. Column number five is name of person against whom application for execution has been made. Column number six is amount of property decreed and nature of the decree. Column number seven is whether any and what adjustment has been made subsequent to decree. Column number eight is amount for which execution is now sought. Column number nine is mode in which assistance of court is required. Column number 10 is date of hearing of the application. Column number 11 is the purpose for which the date is fixed. Column number 12 is by delivery of property specifically de specially decreed. Column number 13 to 15 gives uh, gives the particulars or amount realized. That is if the amount is realized by payment voluntarily or by attachment and sale of property or temporary alienation through character or by the court or by after arrest and so and imprisonment. Column number six is the total. Column number 17 is the date of issue of certificate under order 21 rule 94 CPC in the case of immovable property and also the date of sending copy to the registering officer. Column number 18 is cause of non completion of execution. Column number 19 is date on which a case of execution was struck off the file or transferred to the collector and purport of final order. Column number 920 is name of officer passing final order. Column number 21 is date of dispatch of record to the record keeper. Column number 22 is the date of consignment in the record room with number and record keeper, Kuliath register and column number 23 is remarks. Note all second and subsequent applications in the same case should be entered in this register with red ink to ensure an accurate total of column eight being obtained at the close of the year for annual district statement number four civil. In column number two, both the dates of presentation and registration of application should be entered one over the other, the upper one being the date of presentation. 
Step five: Fill various columns of the register. Affix serial number on the register and on the execution application. Step six: Where the court has passed an order to issue notice to JD, Elmer or execution clerk shall issue notice to JD to show cause why execution should not be issued against him in pro forma number seven, appendix E C P C. Which is as follows. So we have also provided the pro forma on which the helmet or execution clerk is to give the notice to show cause why execution should not issue. Order twenty one, rule sixteen. Here in the title, the title of the case that is the execution application is to be given. Now, if we read the pro forma carefully, it says to whereas dash has made application to this court. So in the dash column, we have to write the name of the applicant or the decree holder for execution of a decree in suit number dash of 19 oblique 20. Here we have to give the a number of the suit along with the year on the allegation that the said decree has been transferred to him by assignment or without assignment. This is to give you notice that you are to appear before this court. The name of the court on the dash, the date and the particulars of when he is to appear before the court to show cause why execution should not be granted. Given under my hand and the seal of the court this day of dash. So here the year is to be given, the date is to be given when this notice is issued and thereafter there would be signature of the judge or the presiding officer of the court. Now step seven is enter in dispatch register. Step eight is hand over the process to the Nazir for execution whose signature shall be obtained in dispatch register in token of handing over the said process. So the process that we are talking here is this process, the notice, the notice which is given under uh, Forma number seven. Step nine is that on the Jimny order sheet below the order of the presiding officer, Elma is duty bound to make an endorsement to the effect that the process issued along with serial number and date of issue. Step ten is the is to place the execution file in the pesci for the date fixed. So uh, these were the two important points with regard to the execution that is uh, first is the mode of execution and second is uh, how, what are the duties of the helmet or execution clerk pertaining to the execution application which has been filed before the court. So uh, in our next session we shall be looking into the subsequent part of chapter 4 till then Namaskar.